Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and I'm so excited today to be joined by James Morosini, who is the writer, director, and actor of the movie I Love My Dad. And I wanted to start by talking a little bit about the initial conceptualization of this story, because there are elements of it that are based on your own experience with your dad and him creating another account on social media to contact you. But obviously, there's so many spaces that you've then taken this story to in the way that you've grown it narratively into a feature film. And so I was interested in how you took that initial inkling and that initial initial personal experience and then really played around with throughout the script development process to find the different places that you could stretch that story to and particularly where it could take your character and the father character played by Pat Oswalt. It's a great question. Um, I think at its core the movie's about somebody that's trying to get closer to somebody else by being, uh, which is something that we all do in one form or another, maybe not as literally as uh, the father character does in the story, whose name is Chuck in the, in the movie, and I'll refer to Chuck. Um, and so I, I wanted to explore, well, one, how could this go as wrong as possible? Uh, so, you know, heightening certain elements and uh, just thinking from an initial stage, uh, how far can I take this? Uh, and then two, making sure that I was staying thematically aligned and kind of uh, excavating my own experience around trying to connect. I mean, when you're writing something, you, you have to look at it from both sides. So like, what it, how does it feel when you're trying desperately to connect with somebody else by, by kind of pretending that you're someone you're not? And then also, what does it feel like to be on the receiving end of that and uh, what what does it feel like to be uh, excited by somebody and um, and and kind of having a conversation really between those two parts of myself throughout the story? Yeah, you know, and, and I love with with Patton's character with Chuck as well that we always really understand emotionally what's driving him, and there's a lot of vulnerability that we see in his character in, in what it means for him to be trying to rekindle this relationship and why he does the things that he does. Um, did you find that, that that was fairly straightforward to create that thread for the audience and to create that real vulnerability and emotional pull? Or was that something that, you know, as you were writing the character and as you were working on the script that you found yourself finessing some of the details just to make sure that it always connected to the audience and it was never just something that was being played for comedic effect? Yeah, I wanted the audience to have emotional skin in the game through the whole story so that it never felt like we were just playing for laughs. Uh, because I think I tend to laugh harder when I'm also emotionally invested and characters are in impossible, untenable situations. Um, and I also needed to make sure that we understood why Franklin was cutting out his dad from his life and then also why Chuck needed to do this to get back into his son's life so that we we're really uh, there. There wasn't a good guy or bad guy in the story. We were kind of behind both characters uh, and rooting really for both of them uh, so that we're kind of on the hook the whole time. Like, how is this how is this going to play out? I understand where both person both people are coming from. And, and in talking about why he cut his dad out of his life and, and why he had to kind of shut him down on social media, I like the fact that it doesn't feel like it was one monumental moment of one thing, but throughout the film, there's different stories that he tells that he, when he's messaging with, with Becca, that he kind of is like, you know, this is something that my dad used to do. And it's kind of just this buildup of, of details. Um, how did you kind of determine how you wanted that information to flow to the audience? Because we I don't know all question. of it up front. At the beginning, we just know that there's this real rift and and then as the story progresses we get more of that backstory and more of the history between the two of them i really struggled a lot in the writing process around the question of is it one thing that chuck did that franklin can't get over and it felt emotionally dishonest to me uh the idea that there's this one thing that someone can't get over just because then we as the audience are kind of going, you guys should just talk about this one thing. And in my experience, when there are, when you're having problems with someone, 
it's usually not just one thing. And that's what makes it so complicated and complex and, and almost impossible to untangle because there's just each thing is connected to another thing. And it's, it's almost difficult to put your finger on exactly what the source of the conflict is. And so it needed to feel more uh, like it was across the relationship, that, that it was a more complex conflict that couldn't just be easily diffused. Uh, and I want, you know, and I also, I think that's also just, uh, I can relate to that more as an audience member watching something. I'm like, yeah, I, yeah, when I have problems with someone, it's, I'm like, I don't even know where to start, you know? Yeah. I also want to talk a little bit about the the dialogue of the messages between Franklin and between Becca, because it's it's something where the two of you are playing that out in real time on screen. And so it, there's a real conversation and an intimacy that we see. And at the same time, the dialogue is within text speak and it's very abbreviated, you know, succinct sentences in the way that they would be messaging back and forth. And so were there challenges that came with finding dialogue that worked in that way that naturally felt like chat messaging on social media, but also translated over into working for dialogue and delivery in the scenes together? I spent a lot of time looking over kind of text vernacular and and paying attention to certain rhythms and timing and also the the way that uh people will like myself or others will structure text and i wanted all their dialogue to to feel like they were text messages but that we would quickly forget that they were text messages so that we became really invested in Franklin and Becca maybe actually working out because I, I think that's how we're trained uh, as film goers when you see something that's you know it, it almost in Franklin's mind he's in a rom-com he's in like a the this burgeoning romance and as audiences we're, we're trying we're kind of trained to root for that so I wanted to make sure that that's how an audience felt while they were watching it um, and and then it was just a matter of playing around with the physicalization of that. What does it look like when somebody uh, appears in front of you in a, in a circumstance, especially when the circumstances are a little bit bleak. And then there's this, uh, ex there's this, there's this experience of hope being materialized in front of you. That, that's why she kind of comes in in these interesting ways uh, because she's kind of, that's what it feels like to Franklin and I, I love what you were just saying in terms of the description of wanting the audience to really feel that rom-com element and the burgeoning romance and that that idea and that feeling of, of it working out. And I feel like so much of it does come from the fact that we are seeing these two characters interact together on screen and, and really share these connected moments. When did you realize that that was such an important crux of the film? Because it brings a lot of heart and connectivity because like you said, even though we know it it can't work out. There is still that, that twisted part of your brain. That's like, but maybe it could. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. I, I, I tend to approach genre from character subjectivity. Like what, what genre of film does the character think they're living in and, and have that motivate how the film feels as a whole. And I wanted to keep the feeling of the film as a whole, pretty neutral, uh, unless we were in that hyper subjectivity uh, so that when we're with Franklin and Becca, it feels like a rom-com when we're with Chuck, it feels like a, almost a tense thriller at times because the stakes are that high for him. And then at other moments, it feels almost like a horror movie for him where like a noir where it's like, he's in this kind of labyrinthian emotional trap uh, when he's in the, the laser tag maze uh, but but then when we go to a more objective perspective, I, I wanted to kind of keep my hands as far off of it as I could stylistically so that the story can just play and, and I'm not getting too in the way of it, you know. And, and with that idea of playing around within different genre elements and creating those different tensities or emotions and, and feelings for the audience and watching it, how did that then translate into the way that you were directing the film and the way that you wanted to use the camera in different ways to bring us into the story, depending on the genre and the feeling you were working to create? 
because I was acting in it, I had to be really specific ahead of time uh, with my entire cast and crew, exactly the movie that I was trying to make and what specifically our target was. So the whole movie was storyboarded ahead of time. I knew a lot of the music choices that I was, we were going to be making ahead of time. Um, and so I would often play music on set uh, so that people could get a sense of the world that we were playing in. Uh, uh, and then I would often show my actors the puzzle that we were putting together in each particular moment, um, which uh, I, I think was helpful. Um, just because we're, we're, you know, for each actor's perspective, they, you know, from Claudia's perspective, she's only experiencing the rom-com portion of the movie. And then for Patton, he's only experiencing this hyper intense uh, parts of the movie. Uh, so I, it was important that, I, that, that they were able to see how it all kind of fit together. And with the fact that you're mentioning music in the film as well, one of the scenes that I really love is the moment where Franklin and Chuck are singing karaoke to Boys Don't Cry together, because it's really heartfelt and also just plays very comedically as well in the moment. Um, how did you end up landing upon that specific song and everything it says about those two characters? Because I imagine it was a dance of what works for the scene and also rights and, and music clearances. Yeah, I, I called my dad and I asked him, what's a song that you know, I was between a few, but what's a song that you think really captures the tenor of our relationship? Uh, and that was a song I grew up listening a lot to with him. He's obsessed with The Cure. And so, you know, I, I'm, I wanted this movie to be entertaining and fun, but I was also really making it for my dad in a way and for, for myself. And I was trying to inject as many kind of like Easter eggs that nobody else would even know about other than my dad and I, uh, like the records on his wall. My dad had those on his wall. The character Chuck drives the same car my dad used to. The dog in the beginning is the same kind of dog that we, we had early on. I, I wanted it to feel uh, like it was capturing a lot of these details that, that are relatively arbitrary for, for anyone else, but, but wouldn't be for us. Uh, so that, that's kind of where that came from the song. And then I wrote a letter to Robert Smith uh, asking, you know, if there was some leniency around the cost of such a, a huge song, just cause that was uh, my producers were like, that's going to cost way too much. And uh, so we, we got some, he was, he was willing to help us out. That's really, really amazing. I, I love that he came back and wanted the song to be part of a film so much. Um, you know, and kind of going back as well to talking about Chuck's trajectory alongside the rom-com element, you've done such a great job in the way that you're taking us through these text conversations, taking us through this burgeoning romance, and then constantly pulling us out and reminding us it is his dad messaging him. And, and that's also where we really get to play to a lot of the comedic space and, and a lot of the tension, you know, seeing Chuck kind of going, what do I say? What do I do? And trying to figure out his next move and how to respond to things or even his own uncomfortableness at the beginning when things take a slightly physical nature in terms of the messaging between them. And so how did you set about finding where are the moments where it's going to serve the story narratively, develop the characters or create the right type of comedic beat for us to remind to the audience and literally pull them back out to reality? It's a great question. It was certainly a balancing act when we wanted to just stay with Becca and Franklin or when we wanted the comedic experience of the rug pull with Chuck, because, you know, while it, while it, while moments like that pop creatively, uh, uh, comedically, they, they do take you out of the romance. And so uh, I think in the edit, my editor, Josh Crockett and I really had to, uh, you know, we did, we, we shared the film with a lot of people and we, we would kind of track uh, when we needed to be more in it with Franklin and Becca and when uh, it helped us to shift to Chuck's perspective. Um, and so at certain points in the, mo the movie, we're trying to build the romance 
And so we kind of wanted the audience to forget a little bit that it's also Chuck. And then at other parts of the movie, we're trying to undercut the romance and challenge it and really have it be more about Chuck's panicking to keep this ruse going. Uh, so then it's more uh, Chuck centric and, and we would try to, you know, like more, more consistently remind the audience that that was what was happening. And, and that's obviously also such a great example of the way that the film manages to play with the, the tonality going between the spaces of emotion and going between the spaces of comedy, but that also really comes forth in the performance that you give and the performance that Patton gives in this relationship dynamic between these two men, because it is this really heartfelt story about the connectivity between the two of them with a lot of comedic overlays in it. And so how did the two of you set about finding, again, like that, that balance and that push and pull of where do we need to be a little bit more emotional and real between what's happening with these characters and, and where can we allow ourselves to kind of pull back and enjoy the comedy of what this situation naturally is between them. Yeah, I mean, I think I, I wanted to, I, I never wanted the characters to feel like they were in on the joke. I, I always wanted them to feel like it, it's tempting when you're shooting funny scenes to put your foot on the gas a little bit and to try to make it extra funny. Uh, and in those cases, I would try to pull us back so that, we were remaining truthful to, 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 to what was actually happening. Uh, by the same token, we are, we were making a, we are making a comedy, but it's the, the comedy comes from the situation uh, and the emotional commitment to the situation. So um, that was kind of our, that, that was our guiding light throughout. It was like, how can we make this as real as possible uh, for us? And then, you know, a, a lot of the comedy is like, tension comedy it's like uh how people the funny ways we try to get past tension so when we're like sitting in the car together and chuck is like trying to make small talk and is just saying dumb things and franklin calls him out on it that's something that i i think is very human to do is fill the uncomfortable space so sometimes we would do exercises where we would like you know, tr both try, I, I tried to keep us especially as still as possible so that we were really playing this kind of emotional chess throughout where it's like, we're, we're hypersensitive to what the other person is doing and each physical movement the other person makes, you're kind of like, what do you do? Like, you know, Franklin is hyper vigilant throughout, like, is his dad messing with him right now? And, and Chuck is hyper vigilant because he's like, is my son catching on? But then a lot of the comedy comes from him pretending it's all good. Um, yeah. And, and, and like you said, there's moments which are uncomfortable between them with the tension, but there's also moments where it's, it's kind of gleefully creating some discomfort for the audience as well. Like when yeah. you have Franklin and Becca messaging each other and we see them making out. And then we have a yeah. moment where we see Franklin and, and Chuck making out because it was actually his dad messaging him. And so how did you again kind of play around with how far can we push this level of discomfort for the audience where again, they're still gonna be invested in it because they're invested in these characters throughout? Yeah, I mean, there's there are two opposing forces throughout the story. Franklin wants to get closer and closer to Becca, and Chuck wants to make sure his son is okay, but not get too close to Franklin because he he doesn't want to be getting romantic with his son. That's the last thing he wants. So that tension of what what Franklin wants most, Chuck wants least. Uh, and then kind of pitting those two things against each other throughout the film so that Franklin's highest moments of intimacy where he's the happiest and most euphoric are Chuck's lowest moments of, of, of shame and, and devastation. And then just so that we're kind of getting this like, this massive juxtaposition between these high highs and these low lows in quick succession. Um, uh, that, that appealed to me just that have experiencing that kind of whiplash um, and, and taking an audience on this kind of literal emotional roller coaster. 
And, and, and with all those different tones and, and beats and elements, obviously so much of why it works so well is having someone like Patton of opposite you. And, and I've heard you say that you had him in mind when you were writing the script for that character. And so was interested, were there aspects that you wrote into that character specifically because of how he manages to kind of parlay between the dramatic and between the comedic spaces so effortlessly as a performer? Or what were some of the elements that you feel were very uniquely Chuck because of the idea of Patton? I think when Patton is laughing to cover, there's, I, I just, I, I love those moments in the film and, and uh, from his performance. And I think uh, Patton has a natural vulnerability to him that tracked well with the character. Um, and so really, I mean, he, he's got a huge heart. And so any moment where, um, you know, we're really experiencing what Chuck is going through. I, I mean, you, you really see Patton's heart on, on full display. And you initially weren't planning on playing the character loosely based on yourself in the film. Um, and, and when you kind of were making that decision, it sounds like you and Patton did kind of a, a self screen test together and kind of going over to his place and, and playing some of the scenes. What was that, that tipping point or that moment where you started to say, actually, this really does make sense if I play this character and particularly because of the understanding and the emotional undercurrent that you knew so deeply inside from your own experience, but also from writing and creating him. Yeah, I think, you know, we auditioned a bunch of really strong actors for the part. It was tough to find somebody that was threading the needle of the tone where someone was uh, funny, but then also very dark in other moments. Um, and, and yeah, so I, I couldn't find anyone that was like quite fitting exactly what I had in mind for it. Uh, and then... I went over to Patton's house and he and I uh, filmed a couple of the scenes just on my iPhone where we basically shot it. Uh, and, and then I was able to kind of see, does this, does this work? Do I believe them as father and son? And, and am I still able to direct his performance while also acting opposite him? And we both walked away from that experience feeling confident that it would work. And then once we spoke to our, our producing partners, they were all really excited by the idea and supportive of the idea. And then it was just a matter of figuring out logistically how we were going to, how we were actually going to execute this in a way that we can, you know, make our days and, and, uh, and, and where I can really keep my eye on the, the full picture. And, and lastly, I wanted to ask a question which does dive into spoiler territory towards the end of the film a little bit because I love that closing shot and I love those final moments where we look up and we see Franklin just looking out of the window down at his dad because there's, again, there's just like so many different undercurrents of what's playing out between the two of them in that scene. And was that something where you found the delivery and you found the intonation of that scene kind of the first time you went into film it, or was it something where you played around a little bit and tried different possible directions to really capture what we end up seeing at the end of the film? I was pretty deliberate about what I wanted that moment to be. I, I'm a strong believer that the first and the last shot of a movie are really significant and they, they're like, you know, the first and last page of a book. Those are often the things you remember the most and th there should be some connection between those two and so the first shot of the movie is Patton looking down at his son uh, and the last shot of the movie uh, is the son looking down at his father and, and almost having grown and become you know he has this fuller perspective now and so I, I wanted it to be mirrored in that in that way uh, where they were, where, where Patton was finally in the position of understanding of who his dad is and why he is the way he is. And uh, in a weird way, it felt like that was the emotional journey I went through uh, in the telling of this story. And so I, I wanted that relayed in, the, in just the, the form of it as well. 
I, I love that and really, really enjoyed the experience of watching this film. So thank you so much for your time today and talking all about it. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Jamie. Thank you so much. This was great.